It's hard for me not to gush over OutRun 2006 Coast to Coast. I'd even go so far as to say that it's one of the most exhilarating, satisfying, rewarding, and fun games I've ever played. But instead of me raving about how much of a pure, joyous experience OutRun 2006 Coast to Coast is, I'll take the critical approach. What is it that makes this game so fun? OutRun 2006 Coast to Coast is essentially a sequel to the original OutRun, which was released back in 1986 in arcades. It became an instant classic because of its beautiful graphics, memorable soundtrack, and innovative gameplay. It was a driving game rather than a racing game. There had never been anything like this before, with an emphasis on the feeling and sensation of driving rather than simply winning a race. The game was designed by the famous Yu Suzuki of Sega, who is also credited with Afterburner and Space Harrier, two other classic arcade titles that are all about the feeling and sensation of movement. The game's first true sequel was OutRun 2, released in 2003. It was such a success that several iterations were subsequently released. It was immediately followed by OutRun 2 SP, an expansion with more cars and tracks, essentially doubling the game's content. That was followed up by OutRun 2006 Coast to Coast, that's the version I've played. There was also a more recent version released for the Xbox 360 and PS3 titled OutRun Online Arcade. It featured an HD resolution and improved lighting and textures, but since it did not include all of the content from the original release and SP, the 2006 Coast to Coast version is, in my mind, still the definitive one. At its most basic, OutRun 2 was essentially the same game as its 1986 parent, although it is even bigger, brighter, and more beautiful. The jump to 3D computer graphics helps a lot in this regard, where before the environment had to be rendered with excessive 2D sprites to give the illusion of 3D, the use of actual 3D makes the sensation of driving 180 miles per hour, careening around corners, slipstreaming in and out of traffic, and outpacing rivals who share your enthusiasm for the beautiful journey, all the more satisfying. The basic goal of OutRun is to successfully drive through 5 of 15 total zones. There is one starting zone, but once the player reaches the end of it, they choose the next one by taking either a left or a right path. The player does this four times and ends up in one of five different ending zones depending on their choices. Left paths are always the easier choice, so a player can tailor the difficulty while he or she is playing. Easier paths have bigger, wider turns and less traffic, while harder ones can be true test of skill. I love this design choice. It really encourages replayability since a player can never see all of the zones in one run, and especially since the zones are so attractive and well-constructed. A few words on the controls. Like most other racing games, the left stick controls movement, the triggers control acceleration and braking, and there are also controls for shifting gears. You can either use the face buttons or the right stick to gear shift when playing with manual transmission. Of note is the smoothness that comes when playing with the right stick. The sensation, of course, is not dissimilar to a real gear shift, but it also results in the game being played entirely with the triggers and the analog sticks. This feels really good for some reason that I can't quite put my finger on, but I think it's because of the lack of button presses, the lack of a digital input in the face of purely analog ones. The sensation is smooth and responsive, like the physical steering wheels of arcade cabinets of old. Drifting can be performed by braking or shifting down while turning sharply, and then quickly accelerating again. This is a new addition to the series, and it changes the game feel considerably from the 1986 original. That game, while escapist in its presentation, nonetheless maintained a fairly realistic driving experience. Steering was responsive but tight, making drifts impossible. As a result, cornering had to be precise. Any mistakes would result in crashes or spinning out. OutRun 2, as a result of its looser steering controls and the introduction of drifting, is a much more forgiving and, in my opinion, pleasant experience. In retrospect, the original OutRun was too difficult, and was probably designed so in order to earn more quarters. The low camera angle, which showed much less of the horizon compared to OutRun 2, 
resulted in a game that relied too much on memorization. Only players who knew the course layout well were likely to finish, especially given the game's less forgiving steering controls. OutRun 2 instead emphasizes the journey rather than the destination. Finishing is easy in OutRun 2, but finishing with a great score is not. I think this is a much better system. Less skilled players will still have a good time because their five minutes will have been spent visiting five beautiful and exotic locations. And more skilled players will in turn also have a good time because OutRun 2 has a much more interesting scoring system than the original. Essentially, the game rewards smooth, clean driving. Your score is constantly going up as long as your car stays on the road, with your score going up twice as fast if you're slipstreaming another car. You're also awarded points for every car you pass, with bonus points being awarded when you pass a rival. The rivals are interesting because they can award points in three different tiers based on how fast you're going when you pass them. 12,500, 25,000, and 50,000 points. When these two mechanics combine, that is the slipstreaming and the passing, a wonderful risk-reward system comes into play. The slipstream bonus incentivizes driving close behind cars, and the passing bonus incentivizes passing as many cars as possible, and the two together result in a system that rewards clean but stylish driving. For example, how long can you draft off that truck without rear-ending it? Or how about narrowly slipping between two cars, deftly avoiding collision and receiving the pass bonus for each? Drifting is another interesting element when it comes to scoring. Not only is drifting slower, meaning you will pass less cars, the slipstream bonus is actually not awarded while in a drift. So, when playing for score, drifting is seen as messy driving, a last resort reserved only for the toughest of turns. My one gripe about the scoring system is that the traffic isn't randomized. Cars and trucks will always behave in the same way in the same places. And since the game is timed, that means that ultimately there is a maximum score that one could achieve. I suppose, though, that since the controls are so responsive, the game is so fast, and the variable for where the player's car is at any given moment is so open that someone actually achieving the highest score is pretty implausible. At any rate, playing for score is still my favorite way to play the game, if only because it encourages good driving, and the feeling of driving well in this game is unmatched. Heart Attack is a great new mode that debuted in OutRun 2. In it, the beauty to your right takes a more active role in the beautiful journey, tasking you at every turn with many objectives. These range from the simple, such as passing cars, to the downright weird, such as hitting ghosts. This mode is a small change that makes a big difference. Driving through the same courses with tiny tweaks to your objectives, such as these, makes for really interesting gameplay, where before the tiniest fender bender would affect your score, here, it only matters if that's the current objective. In fact, the current objective might actually be to crash into cars. This is probably my personal favorite of the heart attack objectives since it's such an ingenious twist. The boxy, metallic annoyances that were once in your way of a high score are now the objects of your desire. It's violently cathartic and an ingenious shift in incentive structure. It's worth mentioning that Mario Kart 8 takes this idea of inverting incentive and applies it to its anti-gravity sections. An excellent application to be sure, but OutRun got there first. A final word on heart attack mode. There's an undeniable rush that comes from the infectious sound the hearts make as they tally in accordance with your performance. Call this whatever sexual metaphor you like, but know this, it feels good. I keep using words like feeling and sensation to describe this game, and that's probably a little frustrating, but honestly, it can't be helped. Even though OutRun is a great game with great design, at the end of the day, OutRun is more than just the sum of its parts, it's more than just an elegant system, however elegant it may be. Let me paint you a picture. I escape the confines of an interstate exit, its corridor of concrete giving way to a gorgeous, mountainous vista that's too good to be true. A girl's voice. I want to go far away! Me too, baby. 
Me too. A guitar that could only be from the early 90s echoes through time to punctuate the moment. It's moments like this that define OutRun, and the potential for them is literally around every corner. Every second of playing is a chance for you to drift, to slipstream, to feel the wind in your hair, to hear your virtual girlfriend tell you how cool you are. And you feel it. It's fake, but you feel it just the same. You are pretty cool. Outrun 2006 Coast to Coast is a fantasy tinged with attainability, making it taste all the more sweet.